All right, and with that, uh, I will move on to uh, House Bill 473 and call on the prime sponsor, Representative Bowman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, honorable members of the Commerce Commission. Commerce Committee, excuse me. This is my sixth term here, and I believe the first time I've been to the Commerce Committee. And the first thing I've noticed is your law books are a whole lot smaller than mine in education, which is at least that thick. But <laughs> anyway, there was some confusion as to who, who was and should be the prime sponsor. There was some lack of communication with legislative services. Representative Scott Wallace will speak hopefully after me and was the prime sponsor last year. So I will keep my comments short as there are others that can answer questions better than I. I do not make beer, wine, or anything else. We are allowed to make beer and wine, so why not liquor? Yes, the federal law says we can make wine and beer, but for some reason cannot make liquors, even though buying and using a still is legal. Alcohol is alcohol. The only reason I can find why the federal government is against it is taxes. Interesting, they also tax beer and wine. And why? I can see taxing across state lines, but internal to a state seems to me to be against the Tenth Amendment. <clears throat> As for those that think we can't do this because of the federal law, federal law also forbids marijuana at any level. But we pass laws for that. So if we do not sell the alcohol at parts we make across state lines, then how is the federal government even involved? When I discussed this bill with others here in the State House, they were astonished that we can't, seems everybody know, knew or knows someone that does it. <laughs> with that, I will close and thank you. <laughs> I, I would inform you that you know we heard this bill as Representative Wallace uh, probably can tell you uh, prior to you know to the previous session, and the concern was that the the ATF, the TTB branch of the ATF, uh, does prohibit uh, the production of distilled spirits without a license. Um, if you get a license, then you can make them here, uh, but the hobby distillation um, would be in the violation of that and so I think this committee and the, and the legislature was concerned about that uh, that issue at the time um, I can tell you that for instance the production of uh, the wine at home was actually illegal up until only a couple of years ago I think 2015 we we changed that so um, perhaps uh, at some point the, the federal government will change its rules but I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to uh, to be in in uh, in a fight with them, although obviously the people who are in favor of legalizing marijuana aren't afraid of that, so who knows where we go? Out of my point. Uh, <laughs> Representative Costable. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you for your testimony. So just a quick question. Um, this is a little bit different from last time in that it's you have it out as liquor only produced from here. Was it because you did you feel like it was uh, going to be looked upon more? Well, so I'll let uh, Representative Scott Wallace answer that question because okay. he was the one that did that yeah. that amendment. Further questions? Well, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. You want my testimony? Did you have written testimony? I am sure the clerk would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I'll call on Representative Wallace. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, thank you again, Representative Wallace, uh, Rock and 12, the town of Danville. Um, yes, I brought this bill forward again this year. Uh, it's been tightened up a little bit to, to address some of the concerns in the initial bill last year. Um, the bill's language only allows concentration of the 100 or 200 gallons of wine or beer that are already lawful to produce in the state under the statute um, and just further concentrate that. The amount of volume that anybody would be able to generate under this measure is perhaps uh, somewhere between 8 and 18 gallons as a function of the 100 or 200 gallons of wine or liquor that you could lawfully produce presently. Um, that's a tremendous amount of work. Anybody that's ever made wine or beer at home, it's, uh, you know, it's a labor of love. And this is about craft brewing, not I mean, craft distilling, not moonshine, polar opposite. 
Um, most people that are involved in these types of activities are using an electric still. There's no open flame. These are, this is not a fire hazard. You're probably more risky making bananas foster than making uh, a, a bit of home alcohol. Um, as Representative Bohm mentioned, uh, we already have medical marijuana and decriminalized marijuana at the uh, possession of small amounts. Um, even if you had a medical marijuana card and you were all, uh, in New Hampshire, say on a fishing vessel down the Piscataqua River, if you were boarded for a routine safety check by this Coast Guard and they smelled marijuana or found marijuana on, the, on a person on that vessel, that vessel will be impounded until uh, adjudication by customs. Um, with or with, even with a marijuana, uh, medical marijuana card. And that's his case law to that effect. So, um, nonetheless, we're already in, we've got, you know, one foot in the door, one out the door in this situation. Um, this is just a natural progression of the, of the law that just made it okay and lawful in 2013 or so with the production of wine and beer at home. And, uh, it, with it, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that the committee may have. Thank you for your testimony. Are you concerned about the potential for, uh, when, when you're distilling, there's the issue of separating the, the good alcohol from the bad alcohol. You know, everybody who's ever seen a bootlegger movie probably knows the, you know, the, the concern about getting, uh, I forget whether it's ethyl or- It's the wood alcohol that yeah. comes out for it. No, but here's why. Um, there was a far higher, uh, people that are doing this at a craft level are, we're concerned about a, a premium product, so they're going to discard much more than is re than is recommended in the beginning and the end of the run. Uh, that's what the process is called, making your cuts. Commercial distillers, they want it's all about the buck. They want to keep as much of that product, and they'll actually discard less at the beginning of the run, which is where the the dangerous alcohol is produced. Um, so that's that's not a concern. Okay. And uh, I'd also add that it's currently lawful to do this in eight states, three of our neighbors in New England, Maine, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, it's already lawful, though it is unlawful federally. So this is actually more like a trigger bill in that when it becomes lawful at the federal level, it would then be lawful here in New Hampshire. This statute would not make it okay federally, uh, and that would be the way to proceed. Yes, thank you, uh, Representative Wallace. Um, are you, do you know if uh, there are any penalties in, uh, or what the penalties would be in the in existing New Hampshire statute for somebody who did this if this bill wasn't, I wasn't know. passed? Okay, lost. Representative Coastable. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, of the states that you know that have sort of allowed this, Place. Are you aware of the ATF breaking down any doors on any hobby distillation? No, not at all. In fact, um, you c I tried to reach them, you know, th at this time to talk to the uh, TGB Bureau. They're all in shutdown. Even the information systems are not. <laughs> 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 um, but I did speak with representatives of the TGB Bureau um, last uh, biennium for this bill, and they are not at all. Uh, expending any uh, resources on enforcement at this level. Moonshine producers uh, that are the people that are selling it illicitly, absolutely. This is completely different. This is home production, no sale, just like the wine and beer. You could bring it to a competition and perhaps somebody will come up with the next Jägermeister and market it through the uh, liquor commission here in the area. That's the hopes with this bill. Other questions? Um, you said eight to eighteen gallons. Were you referring to distilled? Spirits? Correct. Yes. So even though it says like two hundred or a hundred, uh, yes, uh, distilled spirits would get much less product. Correct. It's it's a roughly about a you know nine to ten percent yield. So if you were a single person household and you uh, and you made two hundred gallons, excuse me, a hundred gallons of wine or beer, and we use that because a mash is technically a beer from a chemical perspective, you would take that hundred gallons of mash or beer or wine and, and put it in your processor, you distillate it and come out would be around nine or ten gallons. So that's the most that you could produce from um, you know hundred gallons is around nine or ten gallons. Of distilled spirits. Correct. So. Just to answer that question about federal penalties, uh, Title 26 of the US Code sets out criminal penalties uh, Half a million. punishable up to five years in prison or a fine of $10,000 or both. They're, they're considered felonies. 
and that's for possession of an unregistered still, engaging in business as a distiller without filing an application and registration, uh, distilling and prohibited pre presence, which premises, which is um, anything located within or adjoining a residence, um, and unlaw unlawful production or use of material fit for production of distilled spirits or unlawful production of distilled spirits, or purchase, receipt, and processing of distilled spirits when the person who does so knows he has reasonable grounds to believe that federal excise tax hasn't been paid. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, is there a question? <laughs> <laughs> would you believe? Well, would you that's, believe? That's, that's, that's an believe. answer. That was an answer to someone else's question. Actually, no, it's not. You have to vote for penalties in New Hampshire, not that one. No. Would you believe? Further questions? Hey, hey. Important. Can I get a clarification on which types of liquors are distilled from beer or wine? First, I like, for example, rum. Isn't rum from sugar cane and vodka? Vodka can be from. Uh, potatoes. potatoes or something. So are those not yeah. considered distilled from beer or wine? Uh, actually, the, the first step in, let's say, making rum, you would uh, you would ferment the molasses or the sugar cane, and that would technically be a wine, um, or a beer, depending on how you, how you want to look at it. Um, it's also referred to as dunder. You've heard the term dunderhead in the past. Those uh, that's a, a negative connotation of someone who's drinking the. Uh, the wort or the mash before it's distilled, and it's probably around a, you know an 18 percent ABV at that level. Wine, let's say you make a uh, you take a you make a batch of Merlot, and it, maybe it's off palate. Instead of chucking the batch, you could run it through your your still and concentrate that into a brandy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, vodkas are typically done with grain, uh, wheat or potato for the starch. Uh, whiskies are usually from grain, uh, corn, bourbon, rye, things of that nature, sorghum. Oh, so most of those things you just mentioned will be included in this definition. Correct. All right, thank you. Would you believe that Flag, Flag Hill, which makes a bourbon and a vodka all from apples, which the federal government would treat as wine, you know, as, as a wine? We'll learn that about cider. <laughs> cider <laughs> is actually a wine by the federal government. Uh, the federal government is not um, by alcohol content, not necessarily in terms of distilling. But I'm saying in terms of what this would allow is that you could you could still go ahead and make a vodka or or a bourbon or something like that if you distilled it from from you started with the apples. And 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 you know because theoretically the the, the, the Scots oh, the Scots would always joke was that that the difference between them and the English was that the Scottish uh, uh, whiskey is really just uh, an ale boiled down. Right. Further questions? Thank you so much for your testimony. Thank you. So I would call on Representative Balbasaro. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Oh, shucks. Uh, <laughs> Van Morrow. Is that correct? Am I pronouncing your name correct? Uh, Win Van Morrow, actually. Oh, okay. Thank thank you. You. Uh, pardon my poor handwriting. Uh, thank you, gentlemen and ladies, for hearing me. Um, I'm a uh, home winemaker. I actually have a job also part-time uh, pursuing my hobby at some local wineries. And this is, for me, strictly an issue of um, quite honestly, economics. If I go out and I try to make the best wine that I can possibly make, the stuff that I make I think is on par with anything which can come out of Napa or Sonoma or something like that. But in order to do that, I need to get those grapes. And those grapes can cost me as much as like $175 for a 35-gallon flat. If I'm going to make a decent five-gallon batch of wine, I need to have five or six of those. So I'm into this $800, $900 just to make the wine. Typically, thankfully, everything I do works out and I get some nice wine out of it. But it does happen from time to time that something happens to your wine and now I'm looking at $800, $900 worth of what could be vinegar. So now I've got the choice. Do I turn it into vinegar and try to figure out how I'm going to use five or six gallons of vinegar in, over my entire lifetime and the lifetime of all of my friends or do I throw it away? And how do I throw it away, dispose of it in a way which is uh, environmentally friendly? I can't dump it down my sewer. That would go into my septic tank and would affect my leach field or something like that. I don't want to throw it into like the local Merrimack River or something like that. I don't want to, you know, 
harm the environment or something like that. So there's, there's multiple reasons why I'd be interested in pursuing this. None the least of which, as has been stated earlier, is I think that you know maybe if I could make such good wine, and there are other people who are capable of producing these kind of things, maybe in New Hampshire we could take the lead on creating a new you know hobby as going forward here. When Jimmy Carter signed the bill that legalized this in 1978, it created a multi-billion-dollar business for which New Hampshire generates an awful lot of revenue and goodwill in its uh, local craft beer and wine businesses. I don't see why craft alcohol would not be similarly beneficial to the state. So that's my testimony, if I can answer any questions. Thank you. So, so you're telling us that, uh, that bad wine can make good alcohol? Well, if it goes off, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of the stuff that is going to be producing those bad flavors. Typically, those are light organic volatiles, and they would be boiled off at the beginning of that process. So what I would be recovering from that point later on would be more interesting alcohol, which would be minus all of those bad flavors. <coughs> and quite frankly, the work involved for me to actually create the wine, I'm not going to go spend all my time trying to make some you know, backdoor kind of hooch. I don't have an interest in that in the world. It's too expensive. It takes too much effort, and I'm in it for creating the best wines that I can possibly create. If I want mediocre stuff, I'll just go down to the store. I think I can do better, and I do do better than what's created by a lot of the local people. So, Representative Bartlett. Thank you, Mr. Um, I'm just clarifying that this is just hobby, though. You can't make money on it. Absolutely not. I have no interest in making money in it. Because the bills to, to deal with the federal government, to deal with the TTB, you have to have a bond for uh, creating it. You need to have the bond for producing it. You need to put a bond for taxes in. You need to, it's just too expensive. No one short of starting up a business is going to do this. And quite honestly, I think if you're going to do this, I've spoken to some of the people around, you need a million dollars plus just to get started. I'm just a dumb programmer, you know. I live in Litchfield, and I'm just interested in, you know, recovering something in case I've got a batch of wine that goes bad. I don't have access to the kind of funds that could create a business like that, and anybody that's interested in doing that, they, they're going to be doing an awful lot more stuff than I have any interest in following through on. Further questions? Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I apologize I had to run for another hearing. Uh, for the record, Representative Al Baldessaro, Rockingham County, District 5, which is Londonary. Why did I sign on on this bill here? I think it's a no-brainer. Less regulations that we have in personal homes. Okay, these are people in their own homes that are making their own wine and beer, not for sale, for their own use. I grew up in Italian. Okay, um, moving many, many boxes of grapes into my grandmother's cellar. Uh, as a, and also my neighbors, I lived with Italian and Portuguese, all made their own wine. Some made beer, okay, and, but more wine than beer. What I'm saying, there's no re there was no regulations in Massachusetts on this here. I would think they would be worse than us. We're supposed to be a live free and die, but yet we're the nanny state. We want to protect and say, oh no, you can't do that, you might sell that. That's, that's not right. You know, this is a hobby that people enjoy, okay? I mean, I have a hobby, I enjoy eating pasta, okay? <laughs> so I'm glad they're not putting no restrictions on that. But this is people that like wine and beer and like to create certain things. So why would we continue to put regulations on this here when it's not for sale? It's in their own home use. That's all I yeah. have. Simple. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Oh. oh, please. And I'm a little bit confused, and I was wondering um, if you could explain if it's against federal regulation, then how could the state statute override? Can wow, that's a great question. I think that is an awesome question. Because if you look in the U.S. Constitution mm -hmm. under the state's rights, you know, I got them in my pay, my pens, and I couldn't get them out, my pens are blocking it. But I mean, if you look under states' rights, we have the right. 
Okay, if you look, we, we've done medical marijuana. That's a good thing. You can't even get a gun permit, okay, if you have medical marijuana card. It's illegal. So, what's the difference? We are a sovereign state, and we have the right to make our own laws. But that's a great question. Further questions? Thank you so much for Thank your Thank you. Time. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Joe Alexander from Hillsborough is in favor of the bill. Representative L. Waldesaro from Rockingham is in favor of the bill. Bill Allen from Ware is in favor of the bill. Bob Blaisdell from New Hampshire Wine and Spirits Brokers Association is opposed. Representative Howard Pearl is in favor of the bill. Representative Scott Wallace is in favor of the bill. Kate Fry from New Futures is in opposition. And Mark Armaganian is also opposed to this bill. Thank you. the hearing on House Bill 473. And considering we're uh, behind schedule, I will open the hearing on House Bill 485.